Matthew 25. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you drink? And when did we see you a stranger and welcome you or naked and clothe you? And when did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will answer them, Truly I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers, you did it to me. Now, anybody ever heard, we'll leave that up there for a second just for people to see. Okay. Anybody ever heard a politician reference this or maybe make an allusion to it? Maybe not quote the whole thing, mm -hmm. but hey, look, if you have family values, if you you know are claim to be Christian, you need to have your politics make sure that you are promoting There's policy that cares a, for the least of these. There's actually a whole branch of Christianity that this is their entire foundation mm -hmm. for their belief system. And and here's the deal. Um, is there New Testament principle for caring for the poor and the mm -hmm. sick? And so, absolutely. Is that what this verse is talking about? Uh -huh. ah, well, there's a key, there's two key words in this, and it's the words, my brothers. The last verse the least of these, my brothers, you did it to me. And so I had written all this stuff and I thought, this is so long. I want to share all this stuff. And I, I did a quick search on the internet and Pastor Kevin DeYoung wrote what I said much more succinctly. So I said, <laughs> you know what, rather than, you know, get into all my contortions here and notes and so forth, I'm just going to quote what he said because it's so, it's, it's so good. Let's take a look at what uh, Pastor Kevin DeYoung said here. Oops, I'm not Skype sure it. why it went to the Skype screen, but okay. The reference to my brothers in Matthew 25 cannot be a reference to all of suffering humanity. Brother is never used this way in the New Testament. Uh, the word always refers to the physical or blood brother of the spiritual family of God. He must be speaking from the second category, insisting that whatever we do for believers in need, we do for him. Mm -hmm. Brother is a narrower category than all suffering people or all people everywhere. Those who belong to Christ and do his will are his brothers. Mark 3. Matthew 25 equates caring for Jesus' spiritual family with caring for Jesus. This passage does not offer the generic message, care for the poor and you're caring for me. This doesn't mean God is indifferent to the concerns of the poor or that we should be either. It simply means that the least of these is not a blanket statement about physical deprivation. The word least is the superlative form of mikroi, the little ones, and mikroi always refers to the disciples in Matthew's gospel, chapter wow. 10, 18, and 11. Next. Love that Skype. Yeah, I don't know. What's up with that? I'm no, not that's sure the what's same, up. That's the same deal. You just went back to the beginning. Okay. Sorry. Hopefully I have all your stuff here. Well, if not, we'll be able to, we'll, we'll, be, we'll be cool. No, nope, that's the same. That is our... That is our beginning. I'm so sorry. I think I did your um, slides wrong on there. <laughs> I don't see. I had a lot of cut and pasting going. This was a hey, tricky thing. It was I a tricky here, thing. So I apologize. Bottom line is this. When Jesus said, care for the least of these, my brothers, he was specifically talking about church people. He was not talking about the poor in general the suffering in general. And if you go a little bit further, particularly when he looked at the apostles, knowing that they were going to suffer persecution, and deprivation, you know, and so forth. He was even making more of a statement of those that are going forth and preaching the gospel. And so this is, there, there are other verses for the poor and sick, but this ain't one of them. Wow. I don't think I've ever heard that. Well, I preached it before, but you must have. <laughs> I must have been sleeping. You were homesick no, for that. I was homesick that night. All righty. So let's take a look uh, at verse, uh, at John chapter 12. And let's take a look at a very fa famous passage. Then Mary took a 12 ounce jar of expensive perfume made from essence of nard and she anointed Jesus' feet with it, wiping his feet with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance, but Judas Iscariot, the disciple who would soon betray him said, that perfume was worth a year's wages. It should have been sold and the money given to the poor. Not that he cared for the poor, he was a thief. And since he was in charge of the disciples' money, he often stole some for himself. Oops. Jesus replied, leave her alone. She did this in preparation for my burial. You will always have the poor among you, but you will not always have me. Well, other than the prophetic uh, accuracy of the poor always being among us, therefore a war on poverty is, I guess, well, anyway, um, th that, that's, 
it, that's not my point politically. I'm just saying when Jesus said this, I want you to see something here. When he allowed this, it was a year's wages. Okay, this was a that's commodity. A lot of money. Okay, this is a commodity, and this commodity, you know, obviously appreciated to the point where it was worth a whole lot. And when she basically donates it to Jesus in advance of his death and burial, uh, all the apostles got a little, you know, hey, what's going on here? It was Judas himself that really got up in Jesus's business and is like, hey, you know what? This should have been sold. It should have been given to the poor. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. No, nah, he, was, he was not above dipping his fingers mm -hmm. in the till. But here's what I want us to see. We have to be aware, okay, when it comes to even... Our, our charity or our politics of using the outward de good deed of caring for the poor as a shield to inwardly disregard life loyalty to Jesus. Mm. Okay, here's the deal. Judas was disregarding the way of Jesus, but claimed to care for the poor. Right. When I hear people say, got to care for the poor, care for the poor. Good. Agree with you. But what is your loyalty to Jesus? Right. That's what I want to see before right. I can say, oh yeah, you're, you're same as me here. Mm -hmm. Jesus has to be the common foundation first. And here's the deal. He, he uses her as a shield to disregard loyalty to Jesus, including thou shalt not steal. Uh, and especially when our desire is to be generous with other people's stuff. Again, this is not a political statement. It's about human dignity yeah. and free will, uh, basically without their willing consent. So when somebody says, hey, let's take other people's stuff, give it to the poor, I might hear Robin Hood. Or Judas. Or Judas. But I'm not hearing Jesus. <laughs> right. Jesus is saying, look, care for the poor, that's fine. But this commodity right now that's being dedicated to my mm -hmm. honor, leave her alone. Yeah. Even said, what it, this is going to be preached forever because and out of honor 